Welcome to the Tzorba Merabanan Hilchot Shabbat program with Rabbi Shalom Rauser. Tzorba is a revolutionary halacha sefer which guides you through over 300 topics in Jewish law in a unique signature style. In this weekly series specifically, Rabbi Shalom Rosner learns through the Tzorba Hilchot Shabbat volumes, helping us all master the halachot of Shabbat in just two years. Tzorba volumes are available for purchase worldwide on Amazon. And to learn more about Tzorba, or for those in Eretz Yisrael looking to purchase volumes, please head over to tzorbaolami.com. For more information, see the description below. And now, Rabbi Shalom Rosner. Okay, we are up to the third shear in volume 18 of the Tzorba Meirabana on Hilchus Shabbos. We're in the middle of the 18th volume, the Lax Family edition of the uh, Tzorba Svarim. Uh, this volume, as we mentioned, is dedicated to uh, Lili Nishbas, Yakir Hexter, and David Schwartz, two uh, soldiers who, uh, Kedoshim, who gave their uh, lives, al Kiddush Hashem. And this shear is sponsored by Rami and Rebecca Leifer in memory of Captain Daniel Peretz, Zechorna Lavracha, Hashem Mikom Damo, who was Moser Nefesh for Am Yisrael on October 7th. He fought valiantly and died. Al Kiddush Hashem, all the learning should be a zchus for his and Aliyah for his Neshama. So we get into Shehia. The world of Shehia, as we have had the past three Shehirim, have been Bishal Da'araisa and issues relating to Bishal Da'araisa. Now we start the next three Shehirim <coughs> of Bishal Durabanan. Bishal Durabanan, there are three topics related to Bishal Durabanan. Shehia, Hachzara, or something called just uh, Hazara for short, and uh, and Hatmana. Shehia, Hachzara, and uh, Hatmana. What do these three um, have? And what do they uh, encompass? Shehia is how we leave food on heating sources before Shabbos, going into Shabbos. Hachzara, how do we return food onto heat sources on Shabbos? And Hatmana, insulation, that is before and after. What is the issue? The issue is for Shehia, as we will learn, <laughs> the issue is if I leave food on a fire or on a heat source before Shabbos, it could be that I'm going to see maybe it's not fully ready, maybe I want it to get ready quickly, and uh, then I might come to stoke the flame. I might come to adjust the flame in order for the cook to, the food to cook faster. So that's why Chazal Asard, as a fence, as a siyag, don't, you have to do it in a certain way to remind you that it's Shabbos, because you might remember it's Shabbos, but you might, without thinking quickly, as the language is given in the beginning of the third paragraph of Masech HaShabbos. Shem Yechate, as it's known. Maybe you come, you might come to Stoke. That's according to most Rishon, and that's the issue of Shehiyah. And we'll learn the details. Hachzara, which by the Shem will be the next year, that has to do with how one places food or returns food onto a heat source on Shabbos. And that, according to most Rishonim, is not Shem Yechate, but it's more Mechsi Kimavashal. Does it look like cooking? That's the Isid Rabbanan. Hatmana, as we'll learn, that has to do with before Shabbos and on Shabbos. Uh, and there are differences between the two. Whether I insulate, insulate in a source that just retains the heat, that's a Machsik Chom, or um, one that adds heat. Most of Heva, let it's even on a heat source. And that's uh, a difference between Erev Shabbos and Shabbos. But today we spoke, we start with uh, Shehiyah. Start with Shehiyah. On uh, page 119 is when the third shear in this volume starts. That's what we're going to start with. And uh, again, uh, the um, the notes just uh, remind us of a couple of, of institutions and definitions that we had to be familiar with. There are different levels that a, f- a food is uh, in its development, we have raw food. Then as it starts cooking, it gets to be ma'acho ben drusoy, which basically means edible. Literally, the food of ben drusoy, which who was a bandit in the days of the Talmud, who always had to eat on the run. He couldn't just uh, relax, and that has halachic significance. We'll see. Machlok has a third or a half cooked. Um, then once it goes past ma'acho ben drusoy, then it becomes fully cooked. Mevushal called sarcho. That's the next level up. But even mevushal called sarcho, there are two levels. There's Mitztamik the Yafilo, when it's fully cooked, but as it cooks more, it gets even better. Mitztamik, it, it uh, gets smaller sometimes and contracts, but it's the Yafilo, it's still good for it. Mitztamik the Yafilo. And then there's Mitztamik Viralo. It reaches a level that any more cooking will, will just make it worse. So those are the different levels from raw to macho ben drusoy to fully cooked, Mitztamik the Yafilo, fully cooked. And it's Tamik Viralo. And that, of course, is all by solids. By liquids, we discussed this back in Bishel Daraisa. We discussed Yatso Ledisbo. That's how you determine by liquid. It has to do by, te- by temperature. And we discussed then what exactly is the, uh, the temperature. Good. So with that background, we get into Shihia. And the secret of Shihia is 
the Machlokas Tanoim between Chananya and the Rabbanan. It's a Machlokas quoted in the beginning of the third parak of Masech HaShavis. Um, if you look in the Mishnah Brura, the Mishnah Brura has a Hakdama to Simon Reish Nun Gimel, which is all about issues of Erev Shabbos and Shehiyah. And he quotes from the Sefer Machsa Shekel, who quotes this uh, uh, Machlokas. So let's see what the Machlokas is. It relates to, there are details about how the Gemara in the beginning of Kira fitted into the Mishnah there. But what's important for us, Lamaisa, is just to know what the Machlokas is. What's the Machlokas? So if you look in the, uh, on page 121 in the third line, Shehiyah Mikri. What is Shehiyah? Shenosein. Tav Shil Me'erev Shabbos. Al-Gabi Kira. Where I put a cooked item on Friday. On a kira, on an oven, lo derech hatmana, not insulated. It's not totally wrapped up. That'll be topic three. Bu manicha omed al gabi kira, and I leave it on an oven. U b'shabes no to me a kira, and on Shabbos I take it. That's shehia. Well, how am I allowed to leave stuff on before Shabbos? So she obviously has to be drabanan, right? There's a rule. You can't be violate. One can't violate chil Shabbos daraisa unless you do an act on Shabbos. Even if you do an act on Shabbos, it might only be drabanan. But the other way for sure works. If I don't do an act on Shabbos, I'm for sure at most only violating a Durabanan. I can't violate a Daraisa, B'Shev Valtasa, of Hilcha Shabbos. So, says the uh, Mishnah Baruch, again quoting here in the Hakdama, Machlokas Chananya and the Rabbanan. Chananya holds, Chananya the Tana holds, that as long as a food is Ma'achol Ben Drusoy, as long as it's edible, when Shabbos starts, there are no limitations. I can leave it on an open flame before Shabbos. No limitations. That's the sheet of Hananya. If it's not edible, then I'm not allowed to leave it on an open flame unless I do what's called garifakatum. Either I cover the flame as a reminder, oh, it's Shabbos, I won't come to stoke, or I sweep away the coals. I do something uh, to the heat source to remind me that it's Shabbos. So if it's not Machel Ben Jusoy, I really want to get this cooked by the time Shabbos comes. I want to eat it tonight. So there's a worry that I might come to stoke the coals. But if it's already edible, says Hananiah, it's already Machel Ben Jusoy, then there's no worry. It's already edible. We're not worried. Chazal Warren goes there in that case that there would be uh, an issue, a worry, a concern. And then you have the sheet of the Rabbanan. And the Rabbanan say, no, no, more Machmer. Even if it's Machel Ben Jusoy, you cannot put it on an open fire. It has to be what's called Garifakatum, covered or swept out, which basically means covered flame. Right? You have to have a covered flame, even if it's Machel Ben Jusoy, all the way until, until what? Mavush al No, not even that. It has to be beyond Mavush al even if it's fully cooked, if it's Mitztamik V'yafilo, if it's getting better, the Rabbanan still say, you cannot leave it on an open flame. You have to put it on a covered flame. Once it's covered, so then everything's good. Uh, if, if, a, if a covered flame, then you could put something on the fire of a covered flame, even if it's not Macho Ben Jusai. Because it's covered. We're not worried about anything. And the whole thing is an issue of the Rabbanan, and the Rabbanan aren't goes there. Shem Yechate, you might come to adjust if the flame is covered. But when am I allowed to leave stuff on the fire if it's not covered? Rechananya says, once it's Macho Ben Jusai, that's good enough. And the Rabbanan are more Macho No, no. Only if it's mitztamik viralo. If it's getting worse, that's the only way. Right? And these two deos are both quoted in Shulchan Aruch. Vehein, finishing up on page 121. The Rambam and the Rif Paskin like the Rabbanon, Rashi and Tosfus Paskin like Hananya. So with all that background, with all that background, the, the Mishnah, just to give a little a little um, taste of uh, where this Machlokas is brought up. The Mishnah, the beginning of Kira, Lamed Vav Mabes. You have it there in source number two, on page 122. Kira, she a Kira, which is one type of oven. There are three types of ovens in the Talmudic times. Tanur is the hottest. It has room for one pot, then it's smaller. And a Kira has room for two pots. Uh, so it's not as hot. Kupach is another type. So kira, she sikur bakashu bikvava, kira that you heat it with straw and stubble. No similar tafshal. You could put a tafshal on it. So the big question of the Gemara, is this before Shabbos? Is this on Shabbos? Very not clear. And the Gemara goes through how each shita, Hananya, the Rabbanan, would understand the Mishnah. On Shabbos, before Shabbos. Gefes of Eitzim, lo yitain. If it's Gefes or Eitzim, if it's the psoles. Uh, the, uh, of the uh, grapes and the wood, then you're not allowed to put it on Achayigrov until you swept out the um, coals. Oh, Achayitin or you cool it off. You put on cold, um, cold um, 
dirt or cold ash. And the Gemara wonders, lo yitain, does that mean lo yachsir? Is that on Shabbos or is it lo yitain even before Shabbos? So that's the machlokas uh, and in the Gemara. And again, machlokas chanani the Rabbanan had to understand the Mishnah. Lo maisa, who do we paskin like? As we just said before, machlokas Rambam Rif, Rashi Tosfus. The Rambam in source number three, Ketzad, Tavshil, Shalom Bishal called Sarcho. A Tavshil that was not cooked fully. Remember, Machlokas Rashba Rambam also. The Rashba says that there's there's no Bishal Daraisa once you get to Mavu, uh, Machlob Edrusai. The Rambam? No, all the way to Mavushal called Sarcho. So Tavshil, Shalom Bishal called Sarcho. The Chamin, Shalom Huchmu called Sarcho. O Tavshil, Shalom Bishal called Sarcho. Even if something is fully cooked. The Chalzman, Shalom Bishal called Sarcho. Even if something is fully cooked. But it's still getting better as it cooks more. Ain Mashin also Agaba Eish B'Shabbos. You cannot... Be masha. You cannot do shia. You can't leave it. You can't leave it on an open flame before Shabbos if it's still getting better. Even if you leave it there before Shabbos. Maybe you might come to stoke the coals. Because you want to complete the bishol. Or you want to get it better. As long as it's getting better... There's a worry. Lefichach, says the Rambam. Im garaf ha'eshu shakisa eshakira be'efer. Therefore, if you swept away the fire, or you covered the fire with cold ash, o bin ha'ores ha'pishton ha'daka, o she'imamu gecholim, or you uh, put them out somewhat, you did some type of hecker that you will remember that at Shabbos, and it'll take you some time to, you know, light the fire to, and then by that time you'll remember at Shabbos. Ha'rezim mutu As long as you did this type of ma'isa, it's good. You can be Masha. Because you already put, you took your das away from the tafshel. There's no gzera of shema yichate. That's the Rambam and that's the Rif Paskin like the Rabbanon. As long as it's getting better, you can't leave it on an open fire. And Rashi, unusual Rashi Paskins. Rashi hardly ever Paskins. We have a little bit in Masechah Shabbos, a couple of times in Masechah Shulin also. Rashi Paskins. But Rashi here in Shabbos Lamed Zion. At the end of the sugya, Rashi says, "Anan de mashinan kedir agabi kira sheina grufa." We are minog, says Rashi here in France, that we uh, put pots on uh, on ovens that are not uh, garuf, that are not um, cover, covered up. Ada chananya samchinan. We're relying on chananya. Ho v'tnan v'tnan sasan tnan kamasi zekavase. Because the pashup shot of the Mishnah is like Hananya. Kida Amar Hakar Mushari v'yavagav d'lo bishul kol tzarcho. Even though it was also mavushul kol tzarcho. So that's the Rambam and the Rif versus Rashi and Tosfos. And again, like with the Gemara said on Daf Lamed Lamed Avav, depending on who you hold like will be how you interpret the Mishnah. That even translates later on. There's a Gemara at Shabbos Yudches back in the end of the the first parak. The Gemara says source number five bushul. Shopper dummy. If it's bushel, you could leave it on. Bushel below bushel, usser. But if it's bushel below bushel, then it's usser. What does this mean? So the base Yosef says, well, it depends if you're Rashi and Tosvis. If it depends if you're the Ramam and the Rif. You can interpret this. Says the base Yosef in Mayata. Hadamrinan Bissel Parakama. Bushel shopper dummy. Bushel below bushel, usser. What would the Rif and the Rambam say? You know what that means? Bushel shopper dummy. Bushel means it's totally cooked. And any more would be worse. Misamik Viralo. That's what it means. Bashal is Shaper Dami. May Oz Shit, May Shit, Schlis Bashal, Bain Shil Gil Macho Bejusoi, Bain Shit Gil, Avilus Bashal called Sarcho, and Shis Tamik Via Fellow. According to the Riff of the Rambam, even if it's getting better, as long as it's getting better, it's still Usser. That's all called Bashal Velo Bashal. Bashal Velo Bashal means it's cooked, but it's not fully cooked, and it's fully cooked, and it's not totally reached the highest level. So that's what's Usser. Bashal, but real Bashal, totally fully finished. So that's going to be mutter, right? So and then Rashi and Tosfos would say, no. What does it mean? Once you get the machul medrasai, you're good. So bushel mutter bushel means once you get the machul medrasai. That's how they would interpret. Bushel velo bushel is before that. Is before that. So machlok has how to understand it. As we said, the Shulchan Aruch quotes both opinions. Both opinions. So the rule usually is that the Shulchan Aruch quotes two opinions. And he doesn't quote it as Yesh Omrim and Yesh Omrim. He quotes one as Stama. And then the second one as Yesh Omrim. The usual rule is he paskins like the first one. So here he paskins, he quotes the Rambam and the Rif first. He quotes the Shita, the Rabbanan first, and then Hananiah second. That's the Shulchan Aruch and Rishon and Gimel. Rishon and Gimel Sif Aleph says the Shulchan Aruch in source number seven. Kira she has suya kikdera v'shoftin al piyakdera lamala. You have an oven and then you put a pot on top of the oven. Yesh b'makom shvita shte kideros and there's room for two pots. That's a kira. And again, we're going to see how all this translates into our kitchens. 
But meanwhile, this is all the background. Oh, sir, you can't put a tash on there. Be bowed. Yom lasho so aleha el imkain is pasul called sarcho b'mit stomach veralo. Only if it's, it'll be bad if you keep it on, which is very very few things. Why would you keep it on if it's getting worse? If it's burning, only there do you not need to cover it. Fire to lekel amecha shemi yachate. Avol is pasul ksas full and is pasul called sarcho. But if it's somewhat cooked. But it's not fully cooked. If you feel it's pasha called sarcho, even if it's fully cooked, but it's mistamik v'yafelo, chayshinan shemi yechate. Says the Shulchan Arach in the name of the Rambam and the and the Rif in the name of the Rabbanan. That's a problem. Shemi yechate va'asel l'shahoso, and you have to cover it. That's the first shita of the Shulchan Arach. The Yeshu Amrim turning the page to page one twenty six. The Yeshu Amrim shekol shen is pasha kamachu ben drusai. If anything is cooked, machu ben drusai, or even if. It's Tamik Viafilo, it's Mutu Lahashoso. Mutu Lahashoso, one is Machu Medrusai. Rama, four words. Vinogu Lahakel, Kisvar Achrona. The Minog is Lahakel. So, seems like it's a Machlokas Machaber and the Rama. Though the Machaber quoted both opinions, seems like he quotes like the first one, so Hilis Machmir. So, Svaradim would have to follow the Shulchan Aruch like the Rabbanon. Unless it's fully cooked and it's Tamik Viralo, you have to leave it on a covered fire. You can't leave anything on an open fire before Shabbos. And according to the Rabbanan, uh, according to Hananya, the Ramah, we can, one could be Mekel. The Bir Alacha notes, though, the Mishnah Bura says that maybe even Ashkenazim should be Machmer Lechadchila. Because he says, look at the language of the Rush. Right? Rashi Tos is in the Rush. So he quotes the language of the Rush. And this Rush is, has spanned much, uh, much literature. The language of the Rush he quotes it in source number eight. Mipnesha Yisrael Adukim. The mitzvahs onik Shabbos. This is the Rosh on that Gemara in the third parak in Shabbos. Because the Jewish people are aduk, they are stuck. They are involved in onik Shabbos. Ubavade lo yishmulo. They're not going to listen if you tell them to be machmer like the Rabbanan. Al Cain, therefore, hanach lehem li Yisrael. Leave him. Leave them. Let him do it. So is that a, a, a lechadchila lashon or a b'dieva lashon? The pasuk shot that sounds like it's like, you know, we'd like to tell them, but they're osig and onik Shabbos, and what can you do? Don't don't tell them like mutav shei shogagin. That's what it sounds like. So that's what the bir alacha says. He thinks this is just a b'dieva. Really lechadchila, we should really be machmer like the rabbanan against Hananya. That's how the bir halacha understands. Not all there's a chazonish that's not in front of you. There's a chazonish that seems to say no, no. This is the rush. Hanach lahem, because that's what you should do. And that's the halacha. And therefore, you don't have to like try to outsmart the Ramah. The Ramah says, Lakula, you can go Lakula like Hananya. But again, the Mishnah Bura says in the Bir Halacha, you should lachat chila, try to do like the Rabbanan. Which means, basically everything. Even if it's edible, but you want to leave it on the fire, so you should cover the flame. You should cover the flame. Cover the flame before it cover it, the inside, um, so that it could be... It could be uh, Yotze, the Shita of the uh, the Rabbanan. There is a question that the um, the post can deal with. That there's another uh, there's another um, uh, Shulchan Aruch. And the question is, how does the Shulchan Aruch relate to what we just said? The Shulchan Aruch says in Reish Nun Dalid, in the next sif in source number nine that you're allowed to take raw fruit and put him next to a pot. Put him next to a pot. Perishin echol and chayim. There's even a picture on the bottom there. Perishin echol and chayim. Fruit that can be eaten raw. So if it can be eaten raw, so that's similar to the Gra says machu ben drusai. It's edible right now, but you're just going to cook it more. So the Shulchan Aruch says perishin echol and chayim muter litn amsavi vakdera. You could put it around the pot. Af apishe i efshe she yitzlu kodem chashecha. Even though they're going to get they're going to get roasted, right? You're putting some. Uh, Vegetables, you could have a pepper. I don't know, and you could have roast pepper. You could have roast vegetables. So why are you allowed to do this? Why are you allowed to do this? So some say the Vilna Gon says, here the Shulchan Aruch is passing like Hananya. Right? Because raw is like Machlo Ben Drusai, and he says you don't need a cover. You don't need a cover from before Shabbos. So that's how the Gra understands. Source number 10. Kivin Sheru Yen Lachlan Chayim Logara Mi Machlo Ben Drusai. And... Machu ben is mutter. That's only according to Hananya. So how do you understand this? So according to the Yaakov Yosef, the Yaakov Yosef says, the Shulchan Aruch was Choserba. He quoted both opinions. He gave the impression earlier that he passed him like the first one because he put that first, but uh, it must be that he was Choserba. You look in source number 11, and therefore he says the Minag of Sfardim is also to be Mekel like the Hananya, like the Ramah. Minag of Sfardim, Kisfar Harishon, Umashim Be'er of Shabbos, Tavshel Kiniskar, Al Gabe Eish Gluya. The question is, what do you do? So he says, he thinks that he was Chozerbo. The end of source number 11, turning the page, he says, Maran Chozerbo. Besim and Reish and Dalit, Siv Dalit. And therefore, al kapanim mikan smach lamenag asfardim. Ha-mekilam lahashos, those svardim who are make-alike, 
the sheet of Hananya, that once is Machel Ben Jusai, you don't need an, a covered fire, there is what to rely on. Because he thinks that maybe the Shulchan Aruch was Choser Bo. Rav Mordechai Leo says, Chas V'Shalom. The Shulchan Aruch was not Choser Bo. He didn't say. He would have changed it. He wasn't Choser Bo. The, the fruitcase is not anything to do with Hananya. The fruitcase are cases where you did, you're not putting it directly on the fire. And maybe there's nothing to there's nothing to adjust. That's the case. The Mamar Mordechai. Mordechai Leo in source number 12. There's no chitui possible. You're putting it next to a hot pot. There's no fire involved in that case. But he was not choserbo. It was not choserbo. Lamaisa, though, to sum everything up, it seems like even the the Shochan Arach might hold the vil- maker adin, and the Ramah is makel, but the Mishnah Bura says lechadchila. Maybe we should uh, be machmer. It seems like lechadchila, as the Shmir Shabbos says in the source 13, summing up. We should be machmer like the Rabbana Lachachila, which means even if something is edible, and even if it's fully cooked, but if it's going to be mavash, mitzamik uh, v'yafalo, uh, if it's getting better, if it's a chalent that gets better overnight, uh, so then one should only leave it on a covered fire. If you can't, you can't. You can rely on Hanani, make your adin, but that's Lachachila. That's what the Shemir Shabbos says. Since there are many different details, regarding leaving the pot of Shabbos, tov It's good. It's good that the tavshil should be cooked. Kol tzarcho me'er of Shabbos. Number one, visha kadeira tinatin agav eish mechusen that is put on a covered fire lufnei kisas haShabbos. You don't run into any issues. It's fully cooked. It's covered. V'watin basher lamayim. Bet put a water in beforehand. Fine. That is the uh, Me'ikar Hadid. So what about, before we get into Lemaisa, uh, our kitchen today, she here in contemporary kitchens, two other issues to bring up. Number one, there's something called Kadeira Chaisa. There's a heter called Kadeira Chaisa that means raw. Something raw. Right? The Gemara in Shabbos, Tav Yudches, quotes this heter. And that is, this whole issue of Shem Yechate, because you might come to uh, stoke the coals and forget it Shabbos for a second because you want the food to be ready quicker. But what if for sure we know you have a Hesach Hadas, which is what the hecker is supposed to be by covering the flame. You have a Hesach Hadas, so you're for sure not going to touch the food till you know, the whole night. How do you have that? Kadeir Chaisa. What if right before Shabbos you take a piece of raw steak and you throw it into the chalant? So that, you put it in a piece of raw, it's going to take hours to cook. Hours and hours. So the Gemara says there, Shabbos Yerches Mabez, by Kadeh Rechaisa, you're allowed to put the a piece of raw in, a piece of raw meat, raw something in, and everybody will agree that that's mutter. Red Hasha Damar let's read it. Once we say that the issue of Shehia is you might come to stoke and adjust the flame, Hai Kadeh Rechaisa, but if it's totally raw, Shari Lanuche Erev Shabbos Em Chashecha B'Tanura, you can leave it on raw Kadeh my time away, Kivan de Lochazi Lorta, since it's not going to be ready tonight, no matter what you do. Even if you make the flame higher, it's raw. Asuche Masach Dai Timine, he's Hesach Hadas, he takes his mind away. Veloasi Lechudi Begacholam, you're not going to come. You're not going to come to be Chodi Begacholam. That's what Rashi says there. Devade Chaisa Lava Dai Tila Michla Lorta, you obviously have no kavanah to eat this tonight. You just put a piece of raw steak in there. Omisham Lamachar, and for tomorrow, it's going to get ready anyway. You're not going to, you don't have to worry about adjusting for tomorrow because it's going to be ready anyway. Yeshla shahus gadol, and that heter is quoted in Shulchan Aruch. The Shulchan Aruch quotes this in Reish and Gimel in the Simon that we were just talking about about the Shehiyah. The Shulchan Aruch says Shahayachai shalonis bashal klal kivan shuchai mesiach daitim yemenu alamachar. Sounds great. So we don't have to worry about Shehiyah right before Shabbos. We should put make an announcement and say throw in something raw into the uh, onto the pots. No problem. Two problems. Two problems why this is not Solomaisa today. Number one, there are Hashabas quotes from the Chazonish, who says it could be that when does the cooking process start? Right when something gets very, very hot. Yasoledisbo. So if you put a piece of raw something in, I don't know, you're not going to wait till the end of the 18 minutes. We spoke about this already, Benashmashus. So you'll do it before. You'll do it, I don't know, half an hour before. By the time Shabbos starts, it's probably going to be Yasoledisbo already. So says the Chazonish, maybe that's not called Chaisa. Maybe that's not called raw anymore. The Rech HaShabbos, the Rav in Yerushalayim today, quotes this. If he gets the Yatzel Ledesbo, Beshav Mukdem, as Yosef, before uh, Shabbos actually starts, 
Azai bahagia shashkia kvar hischil abishul ve'en zukadir rechaya. That's not called a raw pot, and therefore maybe this is. We're not going to put it in so close. We're not going to put it in so close. That is one big limitation. While it uh, it might not be lemaisa, but the bigger limitation is the following: that most posts can assume are. Heating elements, our ovens, our, our crock pots, they cook much faster. You put in a raw piece of steak right before Shabbos, in three hours from now, it's probably edible. Were you Mesech Das? Maybe the whole letter of Kedir Chayza doesn't apply today because our cooking is much, much quicker. Look in the Piskei Chuvis. If there are all the conditions of the Bishol, there is today yesh bef shorashay yis basho called sarcho atsu des halayla. It's possible that it could be cooked by tonight in a couple of hours. Also la shoso agabe eshin and mechusa. Right? Then you can't. The heter kteir chaisa. It could really be used today. And this is what's said by Rishlomo Zaman Oyerbach and the Rav, Salvate Chicken, Rabbi Yosef Karelis, and Rabbi Yosef Elio Henkin. All of them say nowadays our cooking goes much faster. And you can't just say, oh, kteir chaisa, and you are Mesiyach Das. That's what he writes in Source 19. On page 132, You can't rely on it because the Mitzvah has changed. This is a classic example where you have to, you read the Shulchan Aruch, but you have to know the Halacha doesn't change. But sometimes the application of Halacha changes. The Shulchan Aruch says, put in a raw piece of meat right before Shabbos, you're good to go. What do we say? No, you can't do that because our heating elements have changed. It cooks much faster. Right, we're talking about why you should limit the Isra Durabanan, but now you shouldn't limit the Isra Durabanan because there's no Hesachadas. So says the Rav Henkin, I will feed Daiti, Ain Lana Lisbach al Hetter Shakir Chaisa, Bishul Betanurim Shalanu, Agabi Pach Shone Harbe Mi Bishul Shalem. Our cooking is much different. Va Bishul Shalem, I show a Kama shows Bachalof, and it took many, many hours. There was no Chashash, there was no concern in the days of old. Shim Yatmin Akadera Slamach Lachashecha. That if you do it right before uh, evening, you're gonna, it's going to be Mesukan. You have to wait until the next day anyway. But here, in a few minutes, in a few hours. So therefore, the whole Kadei Rechaisa uh, probably does not uh, work. He quotes in the footnotes here a couple of postkim that do rely on it. Some say maybe it could work if you have a slow cooker. If somebody makes their chalant in a slow cooker, which really doesn't cook, and it really takes many hours, so then maybe Kadei Rechaisa could help there. And he quotes that from uh, Rav Simcha Budim Kom, Rabbi Willig. So maybe if it's in a slow cooker, um, one can. He writes in the Shabbos kitchen, It is permissible to put raw meat in a crock pot without any blech immediately before Shabbos, provided that one is certain the food will not be ready for the evening meal. If it's on high, it could very well be ready. Moreover, even with a pot of partially cooked food, it's sufficient to put one piece of raw meat to exempt the entire pot. So that is one important issue of Kedera Chaisa and whether it's Lamaisa today. The other issue to mention is Machu ben Drusai. Just to review that a little bit, we spoke about this in, in Bishul Daraisa, but just to review it again. And that is, what is the definition of Machu ben Drusai? That basically means edible in Halacha. When something is Machu ben Drusai, ben Drusai was the bandit that always ate on the run, so once it reaches that level, that's called edible. What is Machu ben Drusai? Machlokas Rishonim, Rashi Ramba. Machlokas Rishonim, Rashi, Shabbos Tavchaf, source number 21, Rashi says, a third cooked. A third cooked is Machu ben Drusai. Rambam, Half cooked. Half cooked. The Rambam and Hilcha Shabbos. Tess Hey. Lo Nislavo Gurus Avon Nisbasho Kulo. Chatsi Bishol Chayef. Chatsi Bishol Chayef. So, what do we pass him like? So, the Shulchan Aruch Harav says, Lechad Chila Yishmi Machber. So, Lechad Chila, in order to leave something, if you pass him like Hanani, in order to leave something, Lechad Chila, it should be half cooked. Lechad Chila. Bidiyeved, if one needs a third. But that's the halacha, we should try to be machmir. Even though this is a dinder abanan, the whole issue of shahiyah, but still, mishim chomer shabbos, sarak lizar lechad chila. But because of the chomer of shabbos, even the derabanans of shabbos, we spoke a few weeks ago about the special um, category of shvusim. But because of that, you know, we should be machmir. Bidiyeved, yesh lahatir, if it's a. Uh, if it's a third, right? And that's what we uh, say, Lechad Chila, we should be machmir, whichever way the Chumra turns out, right? And that is a half or a third. And the Mishnah Baruch also says that in Reish Dren Gimel, Sifkat Alam Ches, Yesh Omrim Chatsi Bishol, Yesh Omrim Shlish Bishol, Val Shulchan Aruch Lekaman, Sasam Chatsi Bishol, V'makam Atchak, Efshar, the Yesh Lohakel. The question is, though, how do you measure half and a third cooked? How do you measure that? The Chazonish says, and the Pisgah Chuvis quotes it, you measure it in time. If something takes three hours to cook, then half cooked is after an hour and a half. 
And the third cooked is after an hour. That's how the Chazonish uh, is Misha'er. Im Nisbashel, reading it from the Piskei Tshuvas. Im Nisbashel called Tzorcha Bebeishos. If it cooks all in two hours, Arbo Im Dakot, Im Shlish Bishulo, 40 minutes is the third. V'nira Sha'at Sha'atav Shomagiel Yatzol Edespo Inim in a But it only starts when it gets Yatzol Edespo. You only start the clock by Yatzol Edespo. That's when the cooking starts. V'tchilas Bishlo Mishashi Yatzol Edespo. But others say, and he quotes this, and it makes a lot of sense, others say that why would you do go by, by hours? Very often, a lot of the change in the cooking happens much more in the second half of the cooking than in the first half. In the first half, it's raw. Going from raw to half the time, much less happens than half to the whole time. And that's why he says, maybe you shouldn't go by time. You should just go by mamish edibility. Shahar be'pamim po'al abishol besofo yosem he calls man abishol. The first 40 minutes, the first 40 minutes, maybe it's not even the third cook yet. Right? You, have to, you have to see if it's edible. You have to see if it's edible. That's It depends on the nature of the food, the extent of the edibility. That's what you go by. Shashir Zed, the Archa Shabbos says, Shal Machtas Abishal, E. F. Sharlon Lisharo, El Abishir's Man Bishal, Full of Beechas Abishal. That's what the Chazonish says. And he quotes on there, Vitzas Sarach Iun. No, it's it's difficult. To Matsu Yusha Iker Richa Chatavshal, the Iker softening of the Tavshal, and the making it edible, Nasib Ergom Achronim Shal Abishal. Right, the second half, much more happens. And therefore, one uh, has to go by the uh, the edibility, mamish, not just the time. Adkan, first part of the shear, first half of the shear, and that is all the background. So now we have to relate this to our kitchens. Relate this to our kitchens. Leaving food before Shabbos. Let's, what are the options? Leaving it on, on an oven, meaning on top of uh, burners. Leaving it inside an oven. Leaving it on a hot plate. And leaving it in a crock pot. Those are the four, right? The first three are discussed here. I'll lay it in the crock pot. It's the same Yisotos. So remember, Chananya, the Rabbanon, the Chachilak, the Rabbanon, Chananya. But an issue that comes up, number one, gas stoves, where you have the burners. What's the issue? Okay, so we pass like the Rabbanon, the Chachilak, and you should cover. What do you cover? So in the days of old, the fire was the source of the heat, and it was what you adjust. In our burners, the burners are the fire, but you adjust the knobs. So what do you cover? What do you cover? So four shitas in the aposkim. Four shitas, right? The uh, the shulchan aruch. The shulchan aruch discusses. We're going to discuss this more in the next year by Achazara. The shulchan aruch says if you want, if you don't, you have a fire. You want to put something on a fire on Shabbos. You could turn over a pot, turn over a pot, and put the pot of full food on top of the empty upside down pot. That's what the shulchan aruch describes in Rishon Gimel Gimel. We'll get to that by the Shem in the next year. What's called kedera agave uh, kedera. So, relating to that, you see there's a concept of covering a fire. Not just the coals, as is described in the Mishnah. You see about covering the fire. So, says Ramosha Feinstein, and this is the Minaga Olam. There's something called, not as common today as it was, I remember when I was growing up, a blech. A blech, a metal sheet that goes on top of the burners. Says Ramosha, that's fine. That's called garuf v'katum. That's called covered. So you want to be machmir like the Rabbanon, and even like Hanani, if it's not machol ben how do you cover? You put on the metal. You put on the metal piece, on the fire, that is a heker. Says Rav Moshe, in Source 28, in Arachayim, lachain ein heker gadol mizeh umutu. There's no greater heker. Shebetanuri agaz ein machasin lo'olam mishol bishol. Nobody ever cooks like this. Nobody ever, you're going to see that. Like, oh, it's Shabbos. It's, it's the greatest reminder in the world. Ramosha says, though, you know what? Lechanchila also, you should also cover the knobs. Me'ikra didn't just the fire. But we adjust knobs. So therefore, you should also do the knobs if possible. Also do the knobs if possible. Lefizah af below kisi gamal akaftor. Me'ikra din. What's the parallel to the gzera of the Rabbanan? The heat source. Cover the fire. That's all you have to do. That's me'ikra din. But because the knobs is nowadays how we adjust, so it makes sense to have that lechanchila if it's if it's possible. So that is Rav Moshe Shita. Yoser Tov Shakisa. That's why people have blacks, which is bent at the edge, so it goes over the knobs too. If, if you don't have that, then just put tinfoil over the knobs. Yoser Tov Shakisu Shalpacha Metal Zichasa Gamasa Kaftorim Kedesha Heker Yegam Bemaka Machitui Kamoa Katum. That's Rav Moshe. Maybe you won't, won't focus on the, on the blech if it's not covering the knobs. That is Rav Moshe. If you look in Rav Shaul, the Jewish Arletzion, it's similar to Rav Moshe, 
Uh, but he says he's not even into the Lachachila covering the knobs. The parallel of the Xera of the Rabbanon is fire. Cover the fire, and that's all you got to do. Right? He was asked, al sham ochal. You want to leave ochal there? gam You have to take that, take off the knobs or cover them. He says, make her a dinno. Doesn't even quote a lachachila. Al kalpanim ain't die by sura zakaftorim levad. But the other way doesn't work, right? You can't just take off the knobs. I'm telling you, you don't have to do the knobs. You can't just do the knobs. You have to cover the fire itself. So that's uh, similar to it's two sheet this, but it's really similar. Basically, covering the fire and maybe the zchadchila covering the knobs. Rav the chazon is here does not like a blech. He says a blech is not called a covered fire. Maybe partially because a blech, uh, a covered fire, has to lessen the heat, and the tin might even um, make it even hotter. Uh, so, and he says, well, what about that shulchan aruch about the pot? No, that's because there's space. There's space. That's the heter. We'll get to that. We'll get to next next time. But there's air space. You pit, the top pot is far away. That's why. That's the heter. It's not just covered fire. Right, a regular covered fire, you put a piece of metal on a fire, that's not good enough, says the Chazanish. In source 30, Lamed Zayin Yud Aleph, Mikom HaKom, Lo Chashiv, Kedin Nasan Kedir Rekan Asal HaKira, Lo Hafsik, Da'acha Lo Havi Rakechisi HaSakira. No, that, that, that's not, it's like you're putting it on the fire, and therefore he does not think that that is a covered fire, but most poskim do not hold of that. Most poskim, like the Yalkut Yosef, and Rav Moshe, and others all say that a blech is fine to be a covered uh, a covered fire. The what other sheetas are there? There is a sefer Menuchas Ahava on Hilcha Shabbos, who discusses that Meikar Adin because the whole Gzera is about uh, adjusting, and nowadays we don't adjust anything with the flame itself. We just adjust with the knobs. So maybe just covering the knobs would be enough. Just covering the knobs, even if you're not covering the fire. He quotes that Menuchas Ava, V'chein Efshel L'Hakah B'Kisi HaKaftorim. Right, this was against what we saw before in uh, Rebbe Tzian Abishol. He says, maybe you could just cover the knobs. L'Charchila is better to cover the fire. L'Charchila also. L'Charchila also the fire, but the Iker is the knobs. And the same thing quoted from Rabbi Eider, quotes from Ravar and Cutler, that uh, maybe even L'Charchila. Maybe he says, M'Shamati B'Shem Ravar and Cutler, to Betanurim Didan, Af the tov shagama ishi amachuse. It's good to have the fire covered, but ha iker hu kisi kaftorim, and therefore be the eved. But makam shakasha. If it's hard to cover the fire, we'll get to inside ovens or or some other case. Just the knobs is um, is okay. Others, the uh, the Ravosner, Rav Moshe Stern, the Bear Moshe quote that they think it's it's an iker adin of both. Iker adin is the fire and the knobs. So the most machimer is the Iker Adin is the fire and the knobs. That's one sheet of the Shevet Alevi and the Bear Moshe. You have, uh, on the other side, you have maybe just the fire, Rav Moshe, maybe just the knobs, Rav Aaron Kotler and the Menuchas Ava, even though both of them kind of say that you should do the other one, L'Chad Chila, as, uh, as well. So that's in terms of Shehiya on top of a uh, fire. So again, cover the flame. Cover the flames. Next. Uh, which also, again, is a little harder for glass top. Glass top. Because I'm not sure if you could put the metal on top of it. That might ruin it. So you have to figure out another way. They have these special covers to put on it. But um, but putting it directly on would be uh, would be a problem. Um, if you want to be L'Charchila like the Rabbanan. Next, what about inside an oven? We're totally not talking now about putting something inside an oven on Shabbos. That's the next year. That's Hachzara. But what about leaving things inside an oven from before Shabbos? So again, if you turn off the oven, many people put their oven on high right before Shabbos. And then right before Shabbos, they turn it off and they just leave things inside. That's not an oven anymore. That's off, right? And that's not a problem. That's not what we're talking about. We're talking about a case where an oven is still on. An oven is still on. So, again, you're only allowed to use it first, according to 99% of the post game, if it's, there's some type of Shabbos mode. Because opening an oven, besides the issue of the Rabbanon of Shehiyah, you have to, A, what about the temperature is going to go down? Right? You open it, maybe there's a light on, maybe there's other um, um, electronic things, the thermostat. So, many say that that is... You know, that, that would be a separate problem. So we only get to this discussion if there is a Shabbos mode. There is a Hector quoted, uh, you have a later on, the Yalkut Yosef says, maybe the whole thing is, even if it's not on a Shabbos mode, um, 
you open it, you don't want the cold air to go in, so it's called the psikresa de lonichale, and you know, it's grama and uh, a couple of other uh, stadim lahakel. So yeah, there is there is a shita out there that says that uh, even if it's not on the Shabbos, but that's not the generally uh, accepted shita. The Shemir Shabbos and others uh, say, no, no, one cannot open the... Um, Open the oven in that if there's no Shabbos mode, unless if there's lights is a problem. Or but if it's just mitzad the oven, so you might say, well, maybe wait till the oven's on. If you wait till the oven's on, so then maybe you'd be able to go because that's again con- con- um, c- uh, continuing the status quo, which one is allowed to do. And that if you skip for a moment to source number forty, the Shmir Shabbos says that Ulam Tanor Chashmali. If you're stuck, and uh, again, if there's a light that goes on, you can't. But if there's no light that goes on, it's just the issue is just the thermostat, it's just the heat. So when you hear the fire on, open it, and then the fire continues to be on. And it's known, there's nothing more electric that happens when you open the door. That's the only uh, possibility. But generally, we should just only use it if there is a type of Shabbos mode which controls the, uh, the thermostat. So, Forgetting that issue for now, what about the Drabun of Shahia? So, Shemichata. So, what about adjusting? So, here it's a little harder. A little harder. Oh, you could cover the flame with a blech, right? But what do you do here? What do you do here? So, the Shmir Shabbat says, Tanur, Gaz, or Hashmal, Asher Muskan, Bo Kaftor, Miyuchal, Matzav Shabbat, Mutalash also, Besocha, Ochal. You could leave Ochal in it beforehand um, from before Shabbos. Uh, the question is, what about. What about adjusting? What about adjusting? So that's the uh, that's uh, the discussion here in the Yalkut Yosef. So maybe here it's hard to cover the cover the fire. So cover the knobs. Cover the knobs. He quotes Yesh uh, Machmirim Lachasos. Or one might say that if it's on a Shabbos mode, I can't control anything. So maybe that itself is called Garfakatim. There are those that say that. Therefore, you don't have to cover anything. It's garfakatim. It's considered. It's covered. You can't control anything. Others, no. Well, you could undo the controls. So there are those that say you should still, even if it's on Shabbos mode, you should cover the knobs. Maybe you should leave. The Yaakov Yosef says write a sign that says Shabbos. Uh, so again, Rav Moshe does not like that lachadchila. He talks about an oven insert, which most do not have today. Some like type of box that you put into the uh, to the oven. Um, but in any case, that might be a case to rely on the Rav Aaron uh, Cutler and others that uh, to cover. Uh, the knobs, me'ikir adin. Again, if it's machlo uh, benjusai, me'ikir adin, you don't need anything because chananya. This is if we want to be machmer, like we try to do, like the Rabbanan, that up until mitztamik viralo, we try to cover, so then you shall at least cover the knobs here, do the best you can to leave things in from before uh, Shabbos. And l'chore, the same thing would be with a warming drawer. A warming drawer, again, if it's on a Shabbos mode, if a warming drawer does not get the asso lettuce bow, there's nothing to talk about. Right, it's all mutter. But if it gets the Yasso Leathers bow, so then put, leaving things, again, we're going to get to Hachzara next week, by the Hashem, next year. But um, but at least in terms of Shehia, it would be okay if you leave some type of hecker. Again, some posts can say just automatically on Shabbos mode, you can't adjust anything. So it's already considered covered, right? There's no Chash. But it seems like Archila, maybe to do something, leave a sign, uh, some type of. Um, some type of hacker. Some type of hacker. That's what Orcha Shabbos says. La hadvik niyar devek al kaftar shemayvir nesachom. Do something like that. Good. So this is in terms of ovens. So we discussed uh, um, uh, burners and ovens. What about a hot plate? What about a hot plate? That's the, that's the next one. A hot plate on page one hundred and fifty. Electric hot plates. The hot plates that we have most places have is that there are no knobs. Just plug it in. There's no way to adjust. There's no way to adjust. So most posts can assume that that's called, for shahia purposes, it's called the covered flame. And therefore, you can put stuff directly on the hot plate. Says the Shmir, Shabbos Kilchasa. Ulam plata chashmalita miyuchedes l'shabbos. Shalom plata. Ha miyuchedes l'shmar achom achal. Nobody cooks on there, and it, it, it uh, keeps up the heat. Ve'en regilim l'vashel l'leha. Ve'gam i'ef shal ha'hag l'smidas achom. You can't. You can't adjust and increase the, the heat. Eina tuuna kisui nosaf does not need another kisui. You don't have to put anything on top of the hot plate. You might want to so it doesn't burn. But you can leave things here from before Shabbos. And he quotes that from Rav Shlomo Zalman, who writes in the footnotes, The fact that you leave it on here, it's already considered 
Gorafakatum covered because you can't adjust anything. And there's Oshem Yechate, the Yefshel Hagdil, and the Yakud Yosef also says the same thing. Revel Yashiv is, is more machmer. He thinks that, no, you need to line it with aluminum foil. The Archa Shabbos quotes this from Revel Yashiv, but again, that is that you need some type of hecker and chatzit, so the Rabbanim warrant uh, machalik, but again, most uh, assume that we don't, um, that we are not machmer for that. The last one to mention that's not here in the, in the book is, is a crockpot. A crockpot, that's the most common way to make challenge. So, a crockpot, I have the, uh, according to many, it's already edible, it's already very good, but pastures is mavushal, it's mitzamek v'yafalo overnight. Mitzamek v'yafalo. So if one wants to be machmer lechadchila, like the Rabbanan, lechora, one should line the entire inside of the crockpot with tinfoil for shahia. Again, lechadchila. Me'ikir adin, we paskin like chananya. And again, if somebody's planning to take uh, Chaland out on Shabbos and wants to put the crockpot back in, then for sure it's going to have to be covered on the inside. But this is, what if not? What if I'm going to take the Chaland out tomorrow morning once and not put it back in? So just shahiyah purposes. So l'chadchila, l'chor, one should still line it. We're going to learn a shita about maybe it's already considered covered because the coils are underneath the metal. That's a big shechidish. Pasha says that one should line the inside uh, and cover the knob. And cover the knob uh, for leaving um, the chalent there from before Shabbos. If it wasn't, then Meikar Adin, you know, one goes to somebody's house and it's not lined, the inside, Meikar Adin is mutter because uh, we pass on like Hananya, like we said, the Ramah says Meikar uh, Adin, um, and uh, you have that sheet to rely on, that maybe it's already considered a covered fire. Uh, but we will see more. But again, we'll learn that the crockpot is has to do with shihia, has to do with hachzara. I will learn, and famously, it has to do with hatmana. Rav Shlomo Zalman's last psak that he gave uh, to um, to Rav Nevenzal. We'll see uh, in terms of the uh, the crockpots and Hilcha Shabbos. Okay, we will stop here. This takes us through takes us through shear number three in volume eighteen, the first of the Durabanan, shihia. We have to do Hachzara and Hatmana coming up. Again, today's year was sponsored by Rami and Rebecca Leifer in memory of Captain Daniel Peretz, uh, Zechron Levracha, who was Moser Nefesh for Am Yisrael on the 7th of October. He fought vanly Dad al Kiddush Hashem. And uh, he really should be a Melis Yosher, unbelievable uh, Machim and Shemayim for all of those, for Daniel and all of those who have been Moser Nefesh for all of us uh, over the last couple of months. We should see Besoros Tovos, Yeshuos Venechamos.